Your life gets tough sometimes. It's true for all of us. In the middle of those challenges, perspectives become cloudy. Family relationships fracture. Marriages are tested. Finances don't add up. Faith becomes a burden. But maybe they're just the result of friction in our lives. Invite your friends and family to this series as we talk about how only God can clear our vision, guide us through the stress and struggles, and help us see the difference between fact or friction. Good morning. You having a good weekend? How many worked outside yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, it was a little windy, that's right. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, we've had people in here working, and we have new paint on these walls here. And uh, we want to say thank you to all those that uh, helped make that happen. So uh, collectively, through uh, these last months, we've done quite a bit in here. So thank you. A lot of different people doing a lot of different uh, things. And we had a baby shower yesterday for the Nelsons. And uh, so happy new baby. Uh, baby's already been here a few times, but... Uh, happy, uh, happy new baby to them. And uh, so that was going on. And uh, Jody entered, she had a, a, a new deck, a, de- uh, a birthday that I've not said how old yet. I've said the year <laughs> she was born, but I've not said how old yet. So a lot of things, a lot of things happening. And, and of course, you have a lot of things happening as well. Uh, I want to welcome you to our new series called Fact or Friction, and that's because there can be struggles and stress in a family. How many of you know that can be true? You can have stress in a family. Uh, None of us are immune. You can have stress in families, you can have stress in marriages, you can have stress in finances, and even within ourselves we can have stress, so we want to learn how to overcome and to deal with that. We'll never be perfect at it, but how do we deal with it? How do we proceed? What does God have to say about family friction? And that's what we want to talk about today. Let's pray. Lord, when we're stressed, sometimes it's hard to know what's true in relationships and what isn't. And so, Lord, I pray you would help us to know your truth, and Lord, help us to learn today Treat each other in ways that are not harmful, but helpful. So thank you, Lord, for that. So, amen. Uh, we, uh, we all have, it happens to all of us. None of us like it, I don't think. And let's talk about friction. Friction is when, when one thing rubs against another. And it causes usually heat, sometimes noise. But it's resistance. Ever try to, ever try to roll a piano across carpet you can do it if you don't care about your carpet (laughs) because unless you're on really big wheels those little wheels just tear it up friction friction Uh, rubbing a match against uh, the little striker plate that's friction it causes the match uh, to life how many have heard the expression I've got one nerve nerve left and you're on it one nerve left and you are on it. Uh, I think of friction with uh, automobiles. You used to have something called, they still do, you just don't hear about it as much anymore, drag coefficient. That's how much resistance your vehicle has as it goes through the air because air, air has resistance. So it used to be a big thing if you could get your car down under 32, the, the number 32 for drag coefficient. I think a lot of cars do that today, but... I remember back years ago, Audi was one of the first ones to care about that. Friction. So everybody do this, all right? Go like this. Try to do it all together and with me. Whoa. Now go like this. Do you feel that? Keep doing it. Do you feel the heat building up? Do you hear the sound? Can you hear it? That's what? Friction. And yes, I thought of Bill Schalter 
Uh, I actually have his name written down here, Bill Schalter, because he used to do this all the time. He'd do that. My mom did that all the time, too. Not all the time. When my mom would do that, th this is what we learned as children. Children are very smart, by the way. Did you know that? We learned this at children. If my mom had a cigarette in her mouth and went like this, you could ask her for anything and get it. <laughs> Can I have a new bike? Yep. <laughs> Whatever you want it. So we would watch for the two signs, and we were, in, we were in good shape. So this is one of the areas where friction is most likely to be present, and that is family, family friction. Um, maybe even before, you know, often I find that it's just before you're ready to come to church, you're ready to do something good, you're ready to worship God, you're ready to be in, in the service, and it's like right before something happens, some... Uh, it, could be, it could be anything. Uh, I've said this before, but we had one of our guys come in on a Sunday morning. He said, I was going to be late, so I sped up just a little bit, and I got a ticket. <laughs> you know, why would God do that to me? Because <laughs> you went too fast. Um, some of the answers I give are very simple. All of the answers I get are very simple. But sometimes it's just, you know, dumb things happen just before you're ready to come to church. And it's like, where did, you know, I, where did that come from? So we, we find... And, and friction is hardest with those you care the most about. And so often that's right there in the, in the family. So moms, think about uh, the last stressful time you had in your family. How did it make you feel toward your husband? Or <laughs> no laughing and no hitting. Dads, think about a time when you felt pulled in too many directions. How did it make you feel toward your children? And again, no hitting and no elbows. Single parents. Stressful times are even more heightened because there's so much to, to do. Kids, think about the last time you had a stressful time in school. And uh, how did it, did you react differently to your parents when you were under a lot of stress? Because life gives you a lot of curveballs. You, you can't avoid a curveball. Life gives you things you can't always anticipate. So let's see what God has to say about this. Because as humans, we tend to try to protect ourselves when we feel like things around us are out of uh, control. We turn inward instead of outward, and uh, we pull in, and, and often we can experience friction. So... That's what I want to talk about today. What does God have to say about uh, dealing with friction, and particularly today, family friction? So, point number one. You might want to write this down. Point number one. When, you're, when you are first, everybody else is last. Yeah, it's probably right there for you. Yeah. When you are first, then everybody else is automatically last. Now, in an ideal family, everybody would rally around each other and support one another and uh, offer care and concern, but it doesn't work so well if you're first. In a, broken, in a broken world, though, things often happen the opposite way. Uh, the most important person becomes us. We try to calm our nerves. We try to get out of our pain. We try to meet our needs. Did you notice one word in that repeating itself over and over again? What was the word? Our, which is like me, me, the most important person, me. Therefore, uh, putting ourselves first automatically puts everybody else last. When we do that, that is the birthplace of friction. That's where it often starts, and that's where it often uh, begins. Here's what it says in Philippians. Do nothing, do what? Nothing. nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. So humility actually raises the significance of those around us. It puts the priority on them. Uh, we fight about who gets the attention and who has the priority and who's first. And naturally, we want to be 
first, but supernaturally, it doesn't work that way. Others can become uh, first. You ever been, been somewhere where somebody butts in line? I'm going from memory here, Jody, but I think it was Disney World when the kids were young. We were in some line, and some guys just went and butted in the line. And You know, nobody wants to cause problems, especially at Disney World when you got your kids uh, with you. But they, they cut in line, and then automatically everybody behind them was, be, was behind them. They, were, they, were not, they made themselves first, and everybody else became last. Now, the Disney personnel were on top of it, and they escorted them to the end of the line. Uh, but the point is that when we make ourselves first, we automatically make others last, or at least uh, behind us. So allowing ourselves to be the highest priority. Let me read that scripture again. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. And that is one thing we can do to help the grind, the friction with mother and father and child and single parent and children. It's one thing that can help us deal with family friction. What else? Well, well here's just something good to know. You are not wired up to have friction all the time. God didn't wire us up that way. He didn't wire us up to have friction all of the time. Uh, so things get dull over time. Brakes in your car do not work as well over time. Knives need to be sharpened. Uh, but in our lives, we're not wired up to have friction all of the time. Don't, you've heard the scripture, don't let the sun go down on your anger and what it wears on this friction it wears on our ability to believe and trust in each other so you get friction all the time he builds up and and if you deal with it and say stop stop rubbing your hands together and they'll cool down again but if you do that over time they're not wired up to do that and what it does in relationships is it's when you have this going on all the time you say well i don't know if i can trust them i don't know if i can believe them and that begins to erode and deteriorate of the relationships that you have and you see this you know the, the family kind of just all out of out of kilter with itself not believing one of the every action that happens gets interpreted through a lens well what did they mean by that why did they say that why are they doing that are they trying to get back at me? Blah, 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 blah. And it goes on and on, and that friction wears us down over time, and it breaks down relationships over time. You're not wired up for constant friction. Let me back up. Every family has friction at some time. Am I right? Every family does. But we're not, so we have to understand that, that we all have it uh, at some time and so, so number one don't put yourself first in these relationships if, you, if you're first you automatically put everybody behind you but secondly we're just not wired up to have friction all the time because it wears down just like friction and brakes make them uh, unable to stop your car over time or friction with a knife you're cutting cardboard all the time and now your knife is dull and it doesn't want to cut again uh, that friction against those things wears them down. In a relationship, the same thing happens. So let's go back to Philippians. Let's, let's, let's read a little longer portion. I'm going to read it a little slower than normal. So I want us to really let it sink in. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ and any comfort from love, any participation... <coughs> in the spirit any affection and sympathy complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love being in full accord and of one mind do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourselves let each of you not only to his look not only to his own interests 
but also to the interests of others, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 2, 1 through 5. It's, it was up there on the uh, screen. Being like-minded. Um, here's what the Greek words mean, like-minded. I, I, I had to write it down so I'd remember it right. We would have a properly regulated internal perspective that would manifest itself externally in our behavior. Do I need to read that again, Jody? <clears throat> that we would have a properly regulated, all right, so you can be properly regulated or regulated wrong. Uh, so what's proper? What's the right way to, and it's talking about our internal perspective. So let's go back to point number one. If our perspective is me first, me first, me first. I remember, what was the cartoon? I don't remember what it was. Little Mermaid or one of those when all the uh, seagulls ran into the sail of the boat. Nemo. Was Nemo, and all their beaks are sticking through, and they're all going, mine, 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 mine. Was that, ne was that Nemo, John? John can quote about any line from any movie. He's, he's really good. <clears throat> a properly regulated internal perspective that would manifest or show itself uh, externally. So it's going to come out, if, you're, if you have the proper perspective uh, inside God's perspective, Christ's perspective, then it's going to show in external behavior. Okay? That, that's what that means. Um, so, practically it means treat each other with love. No matter what outside circumstances are pressing down upon us. Remember those first questions I asked? Dads, when you've had a really bad day, how does that play out later? Um, does, it, does, does your bad day pop out somewhere else uh, once you're home? I remember Jody used to say to me, it, it, was, it was harder when I lived really close to where I worked because I could be home like in minutes. And being home in minutes meant not any time to process the day. So you walk in the door and your day is still going now if it's a good day that may be all right but if it's not you've had this and that's going on then that can affect what you're like when you get home so jo jody had a good phrase um wives do not use this on your husbands <laughs> jody had a good phrase i'd walk in and she'd look at me and say are you home yet well of course i'm home i'm standing right here are you home yet? Are you here now, or are you still processing from somewhere else? About Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. Having the same mindset as jesus let me go back to another thing i said earlier it's not automatic for most of us for most of us we have to consciously say okay i gotta back up i gotta back up and see is is, is my framework is what what's inside is it a a, a christ-centered framework or is it something else remember jesus gave up his power it, from heaven all all power imagine that and he and he he came in the likeness of a man gave all of that up uh, for us that's the mindset of christ this kind of love that's a mindset of christ what does god have to say about dealing with family friction number three use your strength to serve others Use your strength 
to serve others. So we can use our strength in a lot of different ways, but to get to the point where we can use our strength to serve others. Here's a story I read. It was from a pastor, actually. Recently, I found myself being pushed to the edge by my nine-year-old son. He had refused to listen to any instruction from the time he opened his eyes. At the same time, the stress of being a pastor during a pandemic and the stress of moving from one house to the next had my nerves shot. What's so hard about moving? Janice? <laughs> So when my son continued to push back along, along into the evening, I felt my blood beginning to boil. I wanted to lash out in anger and say things that I would regret. I wanted to take away any privilege he had uh, in his entire life and to make his life miserable. However, that night I felt the Spirit of God speak to my heart and told me to lay down in bed with him and hold him. That was the last thing I felt like doing. But it was the thing I most needed to do, so I did. I laid with him, I listened to him, and found out that uh, that day had been particularly difficult for him, too. Uh, he was sad that we had to cancel our vacation. Uh, he, he was sad about being vi having to go vi uh, going virtual uh, for school, uh, that they had to cancel their vacation. The truth was that I needed to listen to him, even though I was tempted to use my strength in a way that would further harm him. That's what Jesus did for us. So, um, he serves them. He was a servant. He walked among broken people. Jesus walked among broken people. And he served them, even though he had all the power of heaven. It was a conscious choice. And so we need to make a conscious choice as well uh, when we find ourselves uh, not wanting to serve others. Number four, related. What does God have to say about family friction? He says, Love your fa loving your family looks like sacrifice. It looks like sacrifice he, Jesus laid down his all of his power all the power of heaven and that led him to being sacrificial and he in fact was the sacrificial lamb and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on the cross willing to sacrifice loving your family looks like sacrifice. Uh, each person has to make one of two choices, to be self selfless or to be selfish. We get a choice there. But remember, in that choice, Jesus' example was to humble himself, and he became a sacrificial lamb. And so sometimes we need to sacrifice for our families. It's a good place to start. So here's some things you have to do. You have to forgive when you don't want to. Uh, this is where I'd appreciate a lot of amens. Oh, I can hear you at home. You have to forgive when you don't want to. You have to be honest. You have to say no to some things that you want. Some things that you want to do. Places you want to go. For your family. It's a sacrifice. Children, you have to be obedient to your parents. Parents, you have to be patient with your children. <laughs> the 
truth is, living as a family is a sacrifice. It's part of the deal. But it's also one of the most rewarding things ever, is to be part of a family. So it comes with the territory. There's no way around it. So you have to understand, if I'm first, then I automatically make everybody last. We have to understand that we're not wired up to be in friction for long periods of time. God knew there'd be friction. Tells us how to deal with it. But we're not wired up to be in it for a long period of time. It's very destructive. Just knowing that and remembering that, I think, is very helpful. We have to remember that we, like Christ, are called to serve others and that in a family, uh, there is some sacrifice part of what it is to be part of a family. You know, you can't hardly be a part of anything without it being, there being some sacrifice. You can't be part of a football team. You can't be part of a band. You can't be part of a club. There's, there's some sacrifice to being part of anything. Why would we think that being part of a family, that it's all about me? It's not. Point number five. The fifth and final point. And don't say amen to that. <laughs> the fifth. See, we don't have mics in here for the people online. They can't hear your, all your comments. We do that on purpose. <coughs> no, no, we don't. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. Um, probably nothing... Nothing I can think of here right now is more important than praying for your family. In the busyness of life, um, with the fast pace and so much going on, uh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got this long list of, of, of things, and um, this needs my attention, that needs my attention. Um, don't forget this important step of praying for your family. God can do, do so much in so little time that um, we, we forget that, how important and how powerful prayer, prayer is. So as life gets harder, as life gets more difficult, pray harder, pray more. And, and by the way, um, as we get older, there's some things we can't do as well as we used to do when we were younger. And all the guys that were here painting and hanging, they all said, yeah, that's right. But I tell you one thing we can continue to do. We can continue to pray. And I will tell you, the church and the people of the church need those prayers. We need them. The people need them. So... If, if you find yourself saying, oh, I can't, I can't do this anymore, and I used to do this, and I, I can't go there, I can't paint anymore, I can't hardly get my arms, you know, past here. And, okay, I get it. I do. Uh, we get it. <laughs> but you can pray. And prayer is vitally in, important. Uh, you know, pray for, just think about who sits around you and pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Pray for the children that are here. And the more difficult things are, the more specific your prayers can be. So if you know somebody's going through surgery, Brandy, it's good to see you here in per person today, by the way. I see you on the screen on Wednesday nights, but to actually see you is so good. Um, prayers can become more and more specific. For instance... I just found, you know, you, somebody said, I just found out I have cancer. Well, now you know something specific to pray for. And it's important that we do that. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Can I just remind you, that Jesus promised us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that gift goes a lot of different directions. He said, I, if, if I don't go away, the Comforter can't come. And the Holy Spirit does so many things. It's kind of the part of the Godhead 
we, we least understand. We know God the Father, we understand Jesus the Son, but the Holy Spirit is a little harder sometimes to grasp. An equal partner in the, in the Godhead. And Jesus said, if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. The Comforter won't come. The Paraclete won't come. And one of the jobs that the Holy Spirit does is when we don't know how to pray, he will help us to pray. And sometimes, just as that scripture says, with groanings too deep for words. So if you ever find yourself, you're praying for somebody, you say, I, I don't know if I should pray for them to live, to be healed, that it's time for them to, I don't know how to pray for them. Say, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, help me to pray for this, whoever it happens to be. But the main point here is, for your family members in particular, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Um, Pray Center is pro-family. Matter of fact, we consider ourselves a family, don't we? But we are pro-family. We, we, we will support the family as much as we can. Pray Center is a place that we want to be a safe place for families. You don't have to be perfect to come in here. You, you don't have to be all, you know, my life is perfect, and, and if it's not, then I won't come. You don't, you don't have to worry about that here. We are a family. We will treat you as a family. But I want us in our own homes and in our own families to be the best, to have the best that we can. So would you stand with me? I want to pray about this. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? And, and if you feel, and, and this could be really big or it could be, you know, not big at all, but if you feel like, you know, Pastor, yeah, stress, I get it. Uh, I, we are experiencing that. Would you just pray for my family? Would you just slip your hand up right now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'll, thank you. You can put your hands down. Thank all, all over the building. Let's pray about this. This is important. Uh, the family is the center. Um, it's the way God wired it up. The family is the core. It's important in our country. It's important in nations. Uh, it is the central unit, the family. Lord, <clears throat> I thank you for your word, and there, there is a lot we didn't cover but Lord, remind us, when there's tension in the family, remind us that, that if we're first, we automatically are putting everybody else second. And if that's going on, remind us of that and help us not to do that. Re remind us, Lord, that uh, to not let the sun go down because friction, if we're not, we're not wired up to have that all the time. It, it'll tear us up. It'll make, our, make us dull. It'll make our relationships dull. Lord, help us to remember that we are here to be servants. Uh, we're not the privileged. We have privileges, but in you, but we're to be servants of one another. Lord, help us not to be afraid of the sacrifice. It's part of it. It's part of how you designed it to work. And Lord, remind us to pray like that, that story with the pastor and his boy. Uh, he didn't realize that his son was going through his own things. Um, Remind us to pray for our family members because there, there may be things they go through that we're not even always a, a, aware of. So, Lord, thank you for that. Help our families, God, to be strong. Help our families to be a safe place for us and a secure place. And I thank you, Lord, for families. Um, I love my family. I thank you for it. And thank you for them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning.